And we're going to talk about a topic that I think sometimes people are not in the mood to hear about. And that's why some people said, Rabbi, just don't talk about it. And then other people said, Rabbi, how could you not talk about it? It's by far the biggest topic of our time. And it's by far the number one issue on people's minds. And if we talk about it last week, and we talk about it this week, there's still room to talk about it next week. So we're going to try to talk about the topic that was requested of us by some of the rabbis to be addressed tonight. And we're going to talk about it, I hope, in a way that is clear and understanding, general and specific at the same time. What we're talking about tonight is technology. And like I said, there are some people who say, keep talking about it. And there's a few people right now who are thinking, how do I get out of the room? <laughs> Our hope is that by the time we're done, both sides of the room will feel that the lesson was tangible and valuable. I'm going to start by reading a Gemara at the end of Masech Kedushim. I'm going to read this Gemara, I'm telling you in advance. It's one of the most unique sounding stories you've ever heard in your life. At some point in the middle of me reading the story to you, you're going to say, you really came from Deal all the way to Queens to tell this story? This is the Gemara you shared? It's going to sound like the most irrelevant, strangest story you've ever heard in your life. And in the middle, you're going to roll your eyes and you say, what's he talking about? And then, hopefully, you're going to see how this story in the Gemara is so gorgeous. Has shalom to ever call a story in the Gemara strange. So gorgeous, so powerful, so relevant, so 2022. So here we go. Here's our story. You probably never even heard of the man in the story. His name is Plimo. Plimo says the Gemara, Masechet Kedushin, Dav Pe'alef. Plimo used to say every day, Gira Be'ena de Satan. He would say, like you could put an arrow in the Satan's eyes. You could knock him out. One day, the Satan, which is the Yetzer Hara, the Satan dressed up like a poor man, says the Gemara. And that day was Male Yoma de Kippuri, Erev Yom Kippur. And so the Satan dressed as a poor man on Erev Yom Kippur, it comes Ata Kara Baba, he comes and he knocks on the door of Plimo. So Erev Yom Kippur, everyone knows, is a hectic and busy day. Plimo goes and opens the door to give the man a little bit of bread. He gives him a little bread. Afik he gives him bread. Amale, the poor man says, Yomakia Idna, on a day like today, everybody's kuli alma gavai, everyone's inside vana avra, you're leaving me outside, you're leaving me outside, Erev Yom Kippur, you're leaving me outside? So Plimo says, you know, you're right. Come inside. No problem, come into the house. He brings the poor man into the house and he gives him bread at the table, at the kitchen table. I don't know, do you, do you guys have housekeepers here? Yeah? As many as we have over there? We have a, it's funny, my daughter like, she's embarrassed because I think we only have like one. So we have a housekeeper in Deal in the summer and we have another housekeeper in Brooklyn in the winter. So my daughter goes around saying we have two housekeepers. <laughs> so if you ever had a housekeeper, you know, the housekeeper needs to eat. So you feed them like on the kitchen table. Everyone's eating the dining table. We feed them on the kitchen table. So Plimo gives this poor man food on the kitchen table. Amale, Yomakia Inna, the poor man who's really the Satan, says, on a day like today, everyone's sitting on the dining room table, Erev Yom Kippur, having a beautiful meal, you're leaving me on the kitchen table? So Plimo says, okay, come, sit on the dining room table, sit with us. Habayativ, he's sitting at the table, this poor man, and all of a sudden, Male Nafshe Shichana Vekivi, all of a sudden his body is full of boils, and pus is coming out of his body. So, and he's doing disgusting things. So Plimo says, sit up. What are you doing? You're, you're, 
Uh, disgusting. Sit up. The man says, this poor man says, I can't sit up. Give me a cup. Give me a nice cup. I- I'll sit up. So Plimo comes, gives him a nice silver cup, gives the poor man a silver cup who has boils and pus and phlegm and I don't know what's coming out. The man starts spitting into the cup. Are we at the point yet where you're saying, what in the world is our behavior talking about? Are we there yet? Again, I am reading the Gemara word for word. I'm specifically opening the Gemara and reading the words inside so you know I'm not exaggerating and changing any of the details at all. Good. So he starts spitting in the cup. Plimo gets upset at him. He says, what are you doing? All of a sudden, this poor man who's really the Satan, who's spitting in the cup, has got pus all over him, all says at the dining room table, he peels over and dies. Umit. And he dies. Word goes out across the town that Plimo killed someone. Because he had a guest. And all of a sudden the guest is dead. Plimo Katal Gavra. Plimo Katal Gavra. Word all over town. Plimo murdered someone on Erev Yom Kippur. So Plimo runs away to the outhouse. Back in the day, he'd run away outside the town. And he goes to the outhouse and he falls on the floor. He's in extreme pain. This poor man who's supposed to be dead, who's really the Satan, shows up at the outhouse and shows up with Plimo and says, by the way, it was me, it was the Satan the whole time. So Plimo says, what were you doing? He says, it's because you said, Gira be'ena de sitna, because you said an arrow in the eyes of the Satan. He says, what should I have said? He said, you should have said, Hashem of mercy, please help me with the Satan. And the Gemara ends. I read this Gemara numerous times and said, wow, this is one of those Gemara you have no idea what it's talking about. Until you understand how life works. And if you understand how life works, you'll realize that the story I just told you with all of those details that sound so peculiar to your simple ears, in a few minutes you're going to realize that this story is so relevant so true, it's happening daily. Here's what the Gemara is saying. Plimo used to say, arrow in the eyes of the Satan, which means, the Yetzir Hara, I don't have to worry about him, I have him covered. And the Gemara is telling you how the Yetzir Hara works. Here's what he does. He dresses up like a poor man. Meaning he starts off Innocently, whatever Yetzirah we're talking about, you can name anyone. It could, be, it could be any area, it could be a drink, it could be a drug, it could be a, 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 a cigarette, it could be an e-lig, it could be a, a, an addiction, it could be, a, it could be seeing an inappropriate picture, it could be gambling, and it could be technology. It comes to the door, knocks on the door with innocence, and says, please, can I come into your house? Just, you know, you'll get yourself an iPhone. It'll save, make things easier. You'll get ways. It'll take you from deal to Queens. Won't be hard. Save you so much time. You want to coach a restaurant, you can look it up. Knocks on the door with innocence. So you tell the Yetzirah, no problem, come into my house. But you sit on the kitchen table. You're not in my life. You're just going to be over there on the side. I'm going to have one WhatsApp chat in order to talk to my kid in Israel so they can send pictures of my grandson. You're sitting at the kitchen table. You're not in my life. And then, next thing you know, the Yetzirah moves to the dining room table. And next thing you know, you're on 40 WhatsApp chats (laughs) with every random fake news video man has ever created is in in your pocket. And then... All of a sudden, the Yetzirah starts to get you to do weird things. Like this poor man's pus and boils. All of a sudden, you're on your phone, you wanted to go to sleep at 11.30 at night, and now you turn around, it's 1.45 in the morning. And you're like, what did I just do for the last two hours? I don't even remember what I did. I don't, I think... I started because I wanted to buy a pair of shoes and I don't know where I've been since then. And then what happens is you say, 
you know what, this is too much. I didn't want this. I didn't never expected that it was going to consume me this much. When it came knocking on the door, I never agreed to this. I agreed to WhatsApp for pictures of my granddaughter once a week because I don't see my granddaughter. I'm helping. My fact, my children are living in Israel. He's learning in Kolel. By me having WhatsApp, I'm supporting Kolel because I'm allowing them to stay there because I can see my granddaughter. That's why I let him in the house. I didn't even realize when he went from the kitchen table to the dining room table. And I didn't realize when all of a sudden I'm up three nights in a row watching things I never expected to. And then what happens is I turn around to the person next to me and I said, I need some help. You got to help me. I need a cup. As Plimo's story, I need a cup. Please give me something to help me. Someone's got to take my phone from me. Get me a filter. Do something to help me. And then what happens is I take the help and I spit it into it. Like this poor man spitting in the cup. Next thing you know, I find my way around it. I find my way doing some tricks with it. And I got the help and I'm spitting in the cup of the help. And all of a sudden, which Lo Alenu should never happen, all of a sudden, a man or woman's reputation could even be hurt and destroyed. Plimo all of a sudden has a dead man in his house and the world thinks he killed him. All of a sudden someone sends something they shouldn't be sending or they're seeing things they shouldn't be seeing. And all of a sudden their marriage is in places they never imagined it to be. And they're like, what happened? How did I get here? Because we're in a time where the enemies, the physical enemies, have never been easier. We don't live in a holocaust, we don't have pogroms, we don't live in Middle Eastern countries that hate us. The physical enemies, for the most part, across the globe, for the Jewish people, yes, you'll hear about a, a random attack where two people are killed every now and then, but for the most part, our physical enemies are almost totally at bay. But the Satan dressed like a poor man has never been dancing in our home more than today. Never. And he got us convinced. And if any person had a home that was somewhat safe from technology, COVID came and it became a mitzvah to have it in your house. Obligation. What are you going to do? You need to know how to sanitize the plastic bag before it comes into the house. You remember the lunacy that we watched during that time? And all of a sudden it came right back into the dining room. Our message here tonight is that we are up against an enemy that none of us were ever prepared for. If you're at my age, which means you remember life without it, and now you see life consumed with it, you can't believe what happened to us. You ask yourself almost every day, how did this happen? Every day you say, what's going on? I was never prepared. I was never equipped for this. And if you're younger than me and you were kind of born into this, you can't even imagine life without it. Like, what are you talking about? When I talk to my kids about the old days, I'm talking 30 years ago. They're like, Daddy, you, you rode in a horse and buggy and you had beepers. You were weird people, olden days, black and white. The grass was probably black and white in your day. But what's happening today across the religious Jewish world is the awareness of this topic has never been stronger. And only three, four years ago, people would roll their eyes about this topic. Right now, everyone is paying attention. And every, you cannot call yourself a from religious Jew if you're not concerned deeply about this. 
You can't be a firm religious Jew without putting tefillin on in the morning. You can't be a firm religious Jew without being deeply concerned about this topic. And it's a topic that's being discussed across the from globe. So yes, there are some people who are not in the mood to hear about it. But a vast majority of people who are aware of what's happening in the world and happening in society are saying we can't talk about it enough because we're so consumed. And this man's in our house, sitting at our table, embarrassing us and embarrassing our lives and has gripping our children. And we need to find some way to get some relief on this topic.